James chapter 2, verses 18 through 24 of the King James Bible states, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe, and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Ye see, then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5 of the King James Bible says, What shall we say, then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. If one were to read these passages of Scripture without closely inspecting them, they would seem on the surface to contradict one another. Today, I would like to propose that there is no error in the Bible, and that these verses work perfectly together. Let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8-9. through 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Notice these verses claim salvation is given to us by grace through faith, not of our own works, lest any man should boast. Now, if you read James 2 out of the context of the rest of the Bible, it may seem like James comes to the conclusion that salvation is given to us as a result of faith and our works. Faith demonstrated by works. If you ask the vast majority of people that claim to be Christian today, they will either have also come to this conclusion or say they believe in salvation by grace through faith alone, but don't really when one digs deeper into their doctrine. James starts verse 18 of chapter 2 with the phrase, Yea, a man may say. And this is crucial to understanding the rest of the passage. Verse 24 says, Ye see then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Notice that the word justified is used here, but not saved. This is largely because this passage is about justification before men, not before God. Men cannot save you. Only God can save your soul from hell. Do you not believe me that this is what James is talking about? Let's compare James chapter 2 verses 20 through 21 with Romans chapter 4 verses 1 through 5. James 2.20 states, Faith without works is dead. Now read Romans 4.4 4 through 5, which states, To him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth, on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Did you hear what both of those verses say? Faith can exist without good works. And did you hear what Romans 4, 5 says? To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. If James was saying faith without works cannot justify you before God, he would have been saying these verses from Romans are wrong. That's not all, however. James 2.21 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works 
when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. If you still believe James is talking about justification before God here and not before men, let me tell you what the Apostle Paul has to say to that in Romans 4 too. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Abraham's belief justified him before God, not his works. His works justified him before men. James ends chapter 2, verse 18 with, I will show thee my faith by works. He will show thee his faith, not show God. If Abraham were justified by his works, he would have whereof to glory, but not before God. I hope you're getting it. So maybe you're wondering by this point, what exactly is a work? Don't I need to turn from my evil ways to be saved? That sounds like it takes some work. Well, let's read Jonah 3.10. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. So, do you need to stop sinning? Yes. You do need to stop sinning. But not for salvation. That is clearly defined as works. So what must be understood before one gets saved then? Well, once one understands the basic concept of the Trinity, the idea that God is one God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are all God but are not each other, there are seven essential points. One. One must understand that they have sinned and that there is a penalty for this sin. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 shows us there's a consequence to this sin, stating, For the wages of sin is death. Revelation 21.8 elaborates on this consequence, saying, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 2. One must understand that God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten Son to die for us. John 3.16, the most famous verse in the Bible, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 3. One must understand that salvation is a gracious, free gift we must choose to accept through faith. Acts 16.30-31 says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. In John 6.47, Jesus states, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. 4. One must understand that, as established earlier, Salvation is not by works. Romans 11.6 shows that grace plus works salvation is impossible, saying, And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. 5. We have assurance of salvation. 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. 6. God may chastise us for sinning, but he will not take away our salvation. 
Hebrews 12, 6 states, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. We are all children of God according to Galatians 3.26, which says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Also, salvation is eternal and cannot be taken away by you or anyone else, according to John 10.28-29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And finally, seven, when you believe, call upon the name of the Lord and ask for salvation. Romans 10, 9 through 14 states, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him? in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And those last couple of lines are why I believe it is so essential for all believers to make it known every chance they get that Jesus provides the only path to salvation and that this salvation is provided as a free gift by grace through faith. Baptism can't save you. Avoiding sin can't save you. Going to church can't save you. Confessing your sins in prayer every day can't save you. Catholic church sacraments can't save you. I can't save you. But Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, can Hell is real, but so is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.